How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Bobby Six Killing. Welcome back to the home stretch of Second Bio, the time when uh, all of our knowledge will be tested, and we shall, I shall, fail entirely. But <laughs> still get to see the proper ending because it doesn't really make a difference in the end. Let's carry on. Um, and now we are waiting by the door in the secret compartment in the storeroom, I believe. Um, just waiting for something to happen, I guess. Waiting for the doors to open. I heard faint voices sporadically, but I had no real idea of what was happening in the building. Once some time had passed, my occasional, only occasional footsteps met my ears. My body began to feel noticeably chilled, so I tried to cover myself well. Shinoya wasn't coming. That was very clear. Was Naomi present, though? I hadn't heard anything regarding it. What about the second mile? During the prolonged silence, I also considered I considered trying to find it. If two existed, obtaining a single one might have been easy. Nobody knew about the hidden partition I was in, so I could hide it there. I knew that would be that would only have added complications though. Escaping the building by touching the second mile wouldn't be possible. When that was supposed to occur, the second mile vanished instead. What the hell had happened at that time? Why hadn't the cabinet state reverted? Without a thorough understanding of the second mile's powers, I couldn't begin using it. So I stayed there, ignorant to the actual time. However, I could tell that a few hours had passed. It had been a while since I heard anyone's voice. Only individual steps had crossed the hallway here and there. Hey, the fuck? Where have you? I looked at the door. It was Sai's voice, which I hadn't heard in a long time. There was no immediate response that I could hear, but I remained attentive. Had Sai seen someone who hadn't been there for a long time? My mind immediately went to Naomi. I wasn't able to properly distinguish anything else, but I could at least tell that the group was in the hallway. I only understood Sai due to his volume. A few minutes later, even those faint signs of life died, faded out. Are they not there anymore? It didn't seem so. Leaning against the wall, I attempted to think about nothing. Minutes later, a couple of sets of footsteps approached from the far end of the hallway. As always, my eyes instinctively turned to the door. It's certainly possible on this on this floor. Don't move from... Was that me? Okay. What? That voice. Mia? Just a guess. We're doing a lot of guessing at the moment. Was that Mia? I must be mistaken. Suddenly the storeroom door opened and I had to fight to contain my panic. It appeared my past self was looking for something as he quickly moved on to the crystal room. It was her, wasn't it? It was only one word, but wasn't that her voice? While it seemed impossible, her existence in the tower had been mentioned before. Edna, Sai, and Arkado had all claimed to have seen her. Does that mean I was right this time? Is she there? On the other side of that door? Multiple people emerged from the lobby side and stopped in hallway C. Meanwhile, I could hear doors being opened. You hear that? What? No. What are they doing? Searching for the second mile? Stay the... Look at the mic... It was my voice again. I think they moved over to hallway B. Right, let's go. And now they're going up? I emerged from the hidden area so that I could hear a little bit better. It seemed everyone was walking up the stairs. Had I heard me? If she was there, I had to see her. I closed the secret wall. I assumed everyone's backs were facing me, so I peeked out from behind the door. If Mia was with them, I didn't mind being seen, but half of me thought my mind had played a trick on me. Most of them had turned past the grey door. I could only see Sai's legs just slowly disappearing. I approached the stairs, hoping I could watch them from a distance. However, all of a sudden, Sai stopped. Had he heard me? I stepped aside reflexively. What's up? Arkado, why is that door open? Shit, they noticed me. As their suspicion grew, I stepped back several times. By the time they came back down, I was in hallway B. Sai and Arkado approached the storeroom and were followed by Katai, Edna, and Isla. What about Mia? Is she not here? My past self isn't either. I couldn't see what was happening from where I was, but suddenly I heard gasps. What? I got closer and shut my eyes in regret when I saw what they were looking at. They found the secret corridor. What the fuck do I do now? There's nowhere else to hide. I looked around in desperation. I could never hide in a bathroom, as Katai would unlock it. 
I saw the elevator was open. It was working. And the others had definitely been in the process of searching the whole building. Did I really mishear that? Was that not Mia? Where's my other self then? What about the Pashiroi? She isn't here either. Are you saying that's why they found, um, Artsky, us, in the top part of the elevator? Did we, are we about to run to the elevator, heat up, hit the stop button and then hide in the elevator? And that's the, the, uh, the Artsky they found? After the place opened up? I walked to the event room, as it made for an easy bridge between the hallways. Just to check, I uncovered the curtain. The second mile wasn't there. I'm not going to spend hours trying to hide it from everyone. If I'm found, I'll explain what happened to me. At least a few of them were still in the storeroom, discussing what they'd found. Some minutes later, I was surprised by the sound of someone walking through hallway A. What was strange was that they'd come from the lobby side. They'd come out of, an, of a crystal room to my left. Was someone in there? Whoever it was had walked to the storeroom, but all the voices I could make out were too muffled. Eventually, I stopped sensing people in the hallway. Did they go anywhere? Just in case, I left through the other side. Yeah, they're not there anymore. Where'd they go? There's no way they opened the door out, is there? They hadn't. It was still locked. Maybe they continued going up. I stared at the crystal rooms in hallway A. There was only one further ahead on the same wall as the event room, A1. That person, did they come out of here? It was a little strange. After all, I knew the floor had just been inspected, and since the others had been about to go up, it was likely they hadn't found whatever they'd been searching for. I hadn't heard anyone entering the room, so if someone had left it, they must have been there for a while. And that was what I found odd. The curtains were raised, showing that the cabinets had recently been looked into. Curious, I went ahead and opened them. I was surprised to find out that my suspicion had been on the mark. A second mile was inside one of the cabinets. What the hell? So someone managed to hide it despite the search? I knew an identical gemstone existed, so I went through the remaining cabinets until I was confident that it was the only Sekimaru in the room. Should I take it? Now that I can't stay in this room, it might be useful to keep it. Unsure, I reached in to grab it, and as I took it out, I was reminded of an unexplained problem. It's not hot at all. That means it's not currently working, but it should be. This is what happens sometimes. The Sekimaru remained cold outside the cabinet, and touching it didn't do anything. Huh. Could it be that out of the two Sekimaras, only one works? It sounded like a plausible idea, but it was denied by the time a Sekimaya had appeared inactive inside his hip pack. It was useless, and I didn't want to give myself another headache trying to resolve it. That was why I put it back where I'd found it. I wonder who hid it there, though. Where do I even go? The tower is being inspected, so I figured the least likely places to be revisited were the bathrooms on floor 2. I shut myself inside one. I'll definitely be found eventually, no matter where I stay. Was that voice really Mia's? I needed to know that. It couldn't have been anyone else. If it wasn't my imagination, it was the real Mia. I had no idea why she'd be there, but if she was, that was the biggest question of them all. It's likely they've all come back down. If she's here, I'll be able to see her. She wasn't with the others in the storeroom though. My past self and Shiroi were missing too. They haven't come back yet. This means that they have access to the attic. I decided that if nobody came after a while, I'd quietly go up and see if I could find everyone. But soon after that resolution, I thought I might have heard someone just outside the bathroom, separated from the rest. Did someone go to the crystal floor? I went out and walked halfway down the stairs. Through the grey door, I saw Sai in the hallway A, going from room to room. What the hell is he doing now? And what the hell is everyone else doing, letting him roam around freely? Was he the person who came out of the crystal room? If he travelled through time, he could have been there and in the storeroom at the same time. However, everyone must have seen that person when they left A left A1, meaning that it was likely not someone who was also in the storeroom, otherwise they would have reacted. And I guess it would have been a paradox. This is strange. He's likely searching for the second mine, which means that he's not who hid it in the cabinet. However, a search just happened. So why is he doing this? Does he not trust the results? I guess that's not all. There must be another second mine somewhere. I stepped away. I could still hear her moving downstairs, but the others could have suddenly appeared. I kept waiting in the bathroom. If Sai sneaked away, they'll notice it pretty quickly. He probably came down to search for himself, and he might find the second mirror I saw. I wonder what he'll do if he actually does. It wasn't working, so he won't be able to activate it. The sound of his movements no longer reached me, but amused by the fact that I could still be patient, I waited for something to happen. 
I didn't know what Sai's intentions could be. Surely he still has to learn everything about the second buyer, but what is his ultimate goal? He was trying to achieve something all day, but I have no idea what. He wants to steal the second buyer, that's his goal. Is that someone above me? For a second, I could discern footsteps coming from the ceiling. Is it the others? The sound grew clearer. A group of people was coming down. Once they went down the stairs, I slowly opened the door. I walked to the door, but I couldn't see anyone in hallway A. Eh? They're not in hallway C either. Any of the... Can you hear... Akiro's voice came from hallway B. From the stairs, however, I couldn't see anyone. I chose not to step down. If I was more patient, I would see them from afar without showing myself. The hell? Seriously burning. Wait, did Katai find the second iron in hallway B? It there? And that's me. My past self was with him this time. Where the hell is Sai though? I have no clue. Either. I need to leave this. They're walking away. The sound of their footsteps was fading. When all of a sudden a sharp sound split the air. What was that? It came from hallway B too. I couldn't hear the others anymore. After waiting for a bit behind the door, I stepped down cautiously. It sounded like something fell to the floor. It didn't seem like anyone was still there. After that sound, the crystal floor's characteristic silence had arisen. Keeping myself hidden, I peeked into hallway B. Nobody was there, but I saw what had hit the floor next to the event room. Uh, a key? Ah, it was a second mire. What just happened? Did they touch it? So it fell when they disappeared? Does it make sense though? Is the second mire would have teleported? Wait, what's the question? Search. What just happened? Did they touch it so it fell when they disappeared? Because. That was because. Because they would have come back here after appearing in the past. Because the second mire shouldn't have worked. Because I don't know what the question even is. It doesn't make sense that it fell when they disappeared because. Not that one. The crystal floor's characteristic silence had arisen. Keeping myself in, I picked the hallway B. Nobody was there, but I saw it hit the floor next to the event room. It was a second mile. What just happened though? Did they touch it so it fell when it disappeared? That doesn't make sense though because. We don't know what its colour is. The second mire doesn't teleport when it gets touched. Um, does the second mire shouldn't have worked? Even though the second mire didn't work for me earlier, it could be working now. It could also be another second mire. What was strange was its colour. It was white and if they touched it, it would have been grey. Did it say it was white? Doesn't say it was white, does it? No. <laughs> I approached it while scanning the area around me, then I felt it through my sleeve. Damn, it's super hot, just like Katai said. There's no way they activated it. I had to have been going to the event room, so I opened the door. When I did, I hit something on the other side. Oh my god, another Sekimoya. <laughs> it was another Sekimoya, however it was powered off, I knew it. Oh, what? What happened? They touched this one instead? Hang on. This is the one I found in the cabinet. If it's not working now, that means it was previously working. The empty cabinet was uncovered. I went to room A1. Inside the same cabinet from before, the third se a third second I arrested. What the hell? There are three of them? I found it through my sleeve as well, as I'd expected. It was cold. Oh, one of them's going to be the fake one that the, that the Shin people brought in, right? So there's two real ones and one fake one. So, this one doesn't work. Frowning, I went back to the event room. Two functional Sekibara were on the floor, close to each other. Hmm. A vague idea had formed in my head during the hours I'd been waiting. Was I right? Where was everyone? If they travelled through time, where were they? Wait, I have to see if I can find them. This is very important. Focused on my thoughts, I walked through the crystal floor. Atsuki suspected that perhaps... The others are no longer in that world? And that's what happens, right? Is nobody here? What about Sai? Did he disappear with everyone else? I had to look above too, so I grabbed both functional Sekimara and walked up the stairs. 
I reached the attic and saw that the door was open, however the key wasn't in the keyhole. Recent footprints were in the living room, but I couldn't hear anyone moving around. I looked in the kitchen, the bathroom, the store, and both bedrooms, they were all empty. I don't think the people who are in hallway B are currently here. I sat on the sofa. The second Myra I'd seen weren't, in, weren't there anymore. Likely because they were the same ones I was holding. This is a great track, by the way. <laughs> this world is clearly not the one I lived through. Many things are happening differently. I thought that maybe the past had been changed at some point. This would have led to the many deviations I've noticed, but there's something about this world that I recognise. And if I'm really recognising something from this world, there's no way it was created after the first time I visited it. What Atsuki recognised from this world was... The empty tower? I don't know. What I recognised from that world was Mia's existence. Even though I haven't been able to see her, what I heard was her voice. I can't doubt that. When that happened, everyone was there. In other words, Mia's existence wasn't something anyone found strange. Not even my past self. A while ago, Edna claimed to have seen Mia, but her reaction was appropriate. She said she didn't think Mia had been in the tower before. However, the same thing didn't occur shortly after that. Of course, I'm assuming Mia's in on it as well. Not gonna keep trying to clear your name? I suppose it'd be futile with how obvious it is that this is your doing. Okay, I'll ask. How do you know about Mia? What? She's been here? That's it, ignore him from now on. He can get out of the corner he's backed himself into. He can't get out. Sai and Akito act as if Mia's existence was normal. And that's not all. After that point, I never saw Akito again. And when he appeared with different clothes after 9 o'clock, he said he hadn't been present at the last time I'd seen him. In addition, Sai's attitude to, at that time was different from how he behaved afterwards. So when did that happen? When did Mia's existence become normal for the world? Ah, uh, shit, I don't remember. I mean, I could go back and find it. I'm not going to, but I totally could. <laughs> um, yeah, this one, when Edna touched the Sekimara in the event room, and then um, only Sai disappeared. Is that that one? It's gotta be. Edna, Sai, Shidoya, and I were in the event room. At that point, everyone was surprised to hear Edna mention Mia. But when Edna touched the Sekimaya, that changed. Both Sai and Akito, who hadn't been in the room, found Mia's existence to be an expected thing. Once again, that's not all. There was another major change. Katai's existence. It was Shidoya's existence. Oh, right. Sai and that too. Sai and Akito were shocked when they saw her. And perfectly in line with that, I haven't seen her since. Didn't Akito also say, or was it Sai who said, that they hadn't seen, that they didn't know who Katai was either? His existence seemed to be iffy as well, depending on the world. When Edna touched the second mile, I don't know how many worlds there are though, like one, two, three, a million? I don't know which one we were in, which one we came from, or how many we've been in at this point. When Edna touched the second mile, something major occurred, I'm sure of that. The second mile must have had a hidden effect all this time. That effect occurred when Edna touched it. That was definitely the strangest travel of them all. Three major questions arose. Why did Edna, Shiroya, and I not travel but Sai did? Why did the second mile teleport instantly back to its cabin? Why was the range bigger than it should have been? Now I'm aware of a factor that I didn't consider at the time, which could be the answer to what happened. Travelling to the future? I don't believe travelling to the future is the answer to those questions. It must be the second Sekimaya. Before Edna touched the Sekimaya, when we entered the event room, Shidori and I were confused to see the Sekimaya in the cabinet. In my case, it was because I'd recently hidden it, specifically in a locker in the staff room. When I saw it in the cabinet, I thought it must have teleported to its original place, or where the cold temperature was. The reality was... <sighs> it's not the same Sekimaya. I don't think it was the same same Sekimaya, however the ones I'd hidden in the staff room had been working, and the one in the cabinet which Edna touched was working as well, so I think that what I believe to be the main key to most of those questions is... What questions? What was the question again? The one I'd hidden in the staff room had been working, and the one in the cabinet, which Edna touched, was working as well. Which second I was activated? It's gotta be, right? No, that wasn't it. Okay. The answer might have been the location of both second I. The one in the event room spent 15 minutes outside the cabinet. Meanwhile, as I had touched the one in the staff room at around 6.30, it should have gathered power for almost half an hour. 
The range of the Sekimai Edna touch might have looked like this. However, the hidden factor that I didn't account for. Yeah, go on. Was the Sekimai in the staff room? It was the rightmost set of lockers, and given the time it had been there, I imagine its range extended halfway through the event room. So it's just the overlap that works? If this is what was special about that travel, then what happened to us? Sai so tra did travel because he was only within the range of Edna Sekimai, however, the rest of us didn't teleport through space or time. Instead, what changed was the world around us. The Sekimai didn't teleport back to the cabinet, that was a mere illusion. Then I quickly went to check the locker and found out the Sekimai had hidden there was gone. That only contributed to the same illusion. It might have been mis I might have been mistaken somewhere, but I don't think that was still the same world. However, what happened later? We did reunite with the Sai who travelled in the event room, didn't we? Similarly, Arkado and the other side were found again. If it was as if we'd gone back to our it was as if we'd gone back to our world. I wonder, does that hypothesis solve every mystery surrounding that travel? What about the range? It was bigger than previous 15 minute travels, wasn't it? Two functional Sekimai existed. If their ranges overlap, the Sekimai's effect wouldn't just be time travel. I think that could be right. It's not an idea that can only be applied in that can only be applied in that instance. Where is everyone? The second bar was just activated when both of them were close enough to each other on the crystal floor, and it doesn't seem like the others are still in this tower. How did I get to this world? Could it really be the same one we briefly visited? This morning Shiroi and I witnessed the second Mai teleport, but that would just be an illusion. The second Mai isn't teleporting, it only appears that way because the entire world is changing. When it happened, we found the second Mai inside a cabinet in room B4, it's very possible the other one had been hidden nearby. That's why immediately after its disappearance, Naomi was running to the attic with both Sekimai. We chased her up, but in the attic staircase, Shidoya disappeared. When I looked at the living room, both Sekimai were next to each other, and one of them was grey. That must be why neither Naomi or Shidoya are here. Lastly though, this would answer the question of how Naomi's corpse appeared two times. If Naomi touched the Sekimai and the world around had changed, she would have appeared in the attic. Her keys had been left behind, so she would have no way to leave. That's what happened. That's what we saw on the floor of the living room. That's why we found Naomi dead twice. The Naomi that Shinoya disappeared with was one of the two bodies that we found dead. Does that mean that the Shinoya there was there since the beginning? The Naomi and Shinoya disappeared was one of the two bodies that we found dead. That is... I have no idea. I'm not following at all anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea what's going on. And we're only guessing here at this point. Now let's go with correct. Unfortunately it is not correct, of course. While it is understandable for us to have made that mistake, I thought perhaps you'd realise the flaw. So if I activate the second mile right now, will I go back to the other world? When Shinoya disappeared, she wasn't in the living room yet, meaning that she didn't leave any footprints. I wondered earlier how I'd been there here for 12 hours without being found, when the searches we executed would have found me. Of course, in this world, this doesn't apply. It appears everyone is gone. Where are they then? Am I really correct in what I'm thinking? Everyone who was in Hallway B was no longer in this world. If that's the case, are they in the world I came from? Is that possible? It might be. But it doesn't feel right. After all, if this is the world where I was when Edna touched the second Maya, Sai and Arkado must eventually come back. It was very confusing, especially because I couldn't prove anything. However, the fundamental basis that I was working with seemed correct. What exactly were the double body mystery? Body double mysteries. I can't understand Shiroya's case at all, and I'm not sure about size. Eastlers, though, could her friend have been the Eastler from this world? From this world, I don't know what the hell to think. And that's most likely due to the blatant example, the second Arkado. The Arkado had different memories and disappeared from the bedroom. Did he come from a different world in the way that I'm thinking? If so, he couldn't have been the Arkado from this world because he didn't know who Katai was, but he did know Shiroya. Now you, what have you been thinking all this time? Do you have your own answers? Nope. I had answers a chapter ago, but now I've, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. First off, what is the explanation behind Arkado? Hmm. I mean, he probably is a liar because we know he's, he's the Shin member. Let's go with Arkado lied. It's just a guess, like all of these guesses, and it'll probably be wrong. Like, we're getting an unprecedented amount of answers wrong. <laughs> That's not it. 
course, the explanation is a world beyond Atsuki's knowledge. So, where did that Arkado come from? Could he have come from a world without Katai? That's what it seemed like. If that's it though, this is too fucking confusing. Could changing worlds bring me to any kind of world? There could be infinite worlds, and the second mark could act as random bridges between them. Now tell him, although he can't hear you, tell him why he's wrong. How many worlds are there? Shit, I don't know, let's go with three. Just a guess. Yes, only three different worlds exist. How'd you know that though? Could you be sure of such a powerful assertion? No! <laughs> because the three worlds... Um... Um... I don't know. Let me just have a look through the bullshit again. Actually, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep looking like that because I'm just wasting everybody's time. I don't know. Link, we're we looking for a full little word. Why is it proven that there are not infinite worlds? Why can't a fourth one exist? It is because the three worlds loop. That is the essential core of the universe you've witnessed. Through the second mile, the link between three worlds looped. The three sides of the mountain spun around, leading to a single peak. But that doesn't answer all the questions, does it? Why only three worlds? Atsuki correctly figured out the second mile's core secret. In each world, two second mile existed. When one was activated, the activated range sent anyone encompassed in it through time. However, if both ranges overlapped, whoever found themselves present within both were not transported through time and space, but through worlds. This effect is called a world switch, although the full extent of the name might make it might not make it a lot of make a lot of sense to you yet. Like everything about the second mile, the world switch had many secrets of its own. Of course, you might have figured out some of them with the tools you were given. No. <laughs> There is one world in which only Artsky is found alive in the tower. He is suspected of having been behind the multiple crimes, but his life is suddenly cut short as he looks through a window. That world will be called A. If that world is A, then the world in which everyone survived and left the tower is B? I don't know, does it matter? We can call it whatever the fuck we want, can't we? No, the world is C, of course. B is the world in which the recorder was present. Why do we care what we label them? Who cares? At 9 o'clock, Artsky Sign Editor weren't able to escape. By world switching from world A, people were brought to... B then, I guess. Yes, this is the way the worlds loop. We've seen a few instances of full loops. Mia's group went from their own world, C, to world A. From world A, they went to world B, and from world B, they went back to world C. Shiroya, after travelling from January 5th to December 15th, went from World B to World C, with Atsuki in the attic she went from World C to World A, with Naomi, and finally she returned alone to World B. In other words, the order is A, B, C, A. Worlds A and C were drastically different, as the worlds followed an intrinsic progression with each other. However, as strange as it might seem, there was only a single degree of separation between C and A. And you're gonna ask me what that is. I mean, if you're asking me if there's a problem with this order, there has to be, right? There is, isn't there? I'm sure you could find instances that didn't follow that order, all of which had something in common. The incident at the tower happened in all three worlds, but the outcome was vastly different. Why? The major difference in world A... Which one's A again? <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this game's getting on my tits, man. Anyway, what's world A? Oh, the one where he was found alive at the end. There was deaths in world A. I don't know if Katai's absence is in world A. Was that in world A? I don't think it was. It was like world B. We'll see. I don't know. Let's go with the second Naomi. In world A, only one Naomi was found dead. The major difference was Katai's absence. It was Katai's absence, okay. Katai put his plan into action. 
He put both real Sekimaru in the suitcase he prepared and moved to the secret door in the storeroom. He felt the handle and quickly realized he dropped the key in the hallway. While he was searching for it, Naomi found the suitcase and took it. Then, when Katai, Katai found the key, he attempted to unlock the secret door. And he did. He was able to leave. But he didn't step out. He saw the Sekimaru being taken before hearing Naomi's foot, foot uh, movements. His plan had been very close to succeeding, so he panicked. He ran behind her desperately, but Naomi had a safe place, the attic. He chased her up, but he recognized that going all the way was a mistake. He could never enter the final floor. He tripped on the staircase, leading to the fourth floor, and nervously walked back down, back without realizing he dropped yet another key. The rusty key. The security room's key, sure. You remember that Artsky found it there, but it didn't happen in World A, did it? That was in World C. Mm. <laughs> I don't know which world is which anymore. Artsky only came across it in World C because Katai had been staring at the floor, and he wasn't there in World A. His mind threatening to collapse in on itself, Katai realized his only option was to escape from the building as quickly as possible. He left through the storeroom before the others woke up. Outside, he was fast enough to meet up with everyone else who had evacuated. He knew the, floors, the floor 2 camera had recorded him, but he was confident he could take care of that at 9 o'clock. Alright, we need to wrap this one up here because we're out of time for today. I hope you everybody knows here that I'm just reading now. I don't understand anything. I'm just saying the words so that you can hear it and understand for me because I'm not going to. But we're very close to the end. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out me and I'll see you in the next one.